This summer was the first year for the new reformed 9 to 1 GCSEs in science. And it's in science where we really saw the most changes to the qualifications that were actually on offer. So no more core science and additional science available. There's now just a combined double award or the individual biology, chemistry and physics GCSEs. And we saw entries for those individual sciences increase quite significantly from about 18% in physics uh, through to 23% in biology. We think there's a couple of things going on there. We think a lot of those entries have actually come across from the old IGCSEs. And we also think that it's likely to reflect the fact that those individual sciences are now the only route to students achieving three science GCSEs. So previously where they could do core, additional and further additional, if you want that triple science, you now have to do those three individual uh, biology, chemistry and physics GCSEs. Across the piece, we did tend to see uh, slightly lower grade boundaries compared to the legacy specifications, and that's true in the combined and individual sciences. Now, that's to be expected. That's exactly what we uh, would expect to see, what we would hope to see, uh, largely due to the comparable outcomes approach that we take to awarding. So you do tend to see those grade boundaries drop off a little bit in the first year of a reform specification as students and teachers get comfortable with it and also to reflect the increase in demand of the new specifications. Now if you want to understand a bit more about the grading process and how comparable outcomes works you can click through to a video on that. And we've also seen a couple of other things going on that have contributed to that in GCSE science specifically. One is the removal of core science and the impact that that's had on the way that students take the qualification. So previously, it was quite common for schools to enter their students for core science in year 10 and then additional science in year 11. Now that's obviously not possible anymore with the single linear combined double award qualification. And we think that that's had an impact as well on student performance and is contributing to those low grade boundaries. Now, if you look at the higher tier, particularly at grade four, then you will tend to see uh, some slightly lower grade boundaries than you might be used to. And it's one of the areas where there's generally a lot of debate and discussion around, you know, the percentage of marks that you need in order to achieve that pass grade on the GCSE. But what's really important to remember is that actually that low grade boundary is intentional and is a reflection of the way that those qualifications are designed. So the higher tier papers have to assess fully six grades from grade four right the way up to grade nine. And those papers are designed to target questions at different parts of the grade range. So on AQA papers, for example, around 40% of the questions on higher tier are targeted at grades four and five. So actually a grade boundary for grade four that was around 20% of the available marks is pretty much what you'd expect to see in terms of the performance of students on those papers. Some other things we've seen across the piece with GCSE science. Uh, generally speaking, the outcomes have been in line with our year 10 tests, which are available free. Now, in particular, what we saw was challenges around AO2, which is application of knowledge in an unfamiliar context. That's something we know students struggle with, and we saw that happening on the year 10 tests, and it did end up being reflected in their performance on the final papers. So an area that students did, did generally find challenging. Now, what was really encouraging to see, though, is the way that many teachers used our Year 10 tests to help inform their entry decisions. So actually, we think that around 30,000 students who sat the higher tier Year 10 test ended up being entered for foundation tier because teachers judged that that was a more appropriate tier of entry for them. And that will have helped to make sure that they secured the right grade. Moving on to look specifically at the individual sciences, so GCSE Biology, Chemistry and Physics. And we saw outcomes there that were really stable to the legacy qualifications. And again, that's what we would expect to see because of the comparable outcomes approach to awarding. Now, we did see you know, slight movements up and down in different directions across the three sciences. But if you look at the outcomes for grade A and above uh, last year compared to grade seven and above this year, or grade C and above last year compared to grade four and above this year, then you can see that actually, broadly speaking, it was very similar proportions of the cohort achieving those grades. Now, in terms of tiering, we saw around 90% of candidates for the individual sciences entered for the higher tier. Now, that's very similar to what we saw last year uh, and what we generally see, because it tends to be the higher attaining students who are entered for the individual sciences. 
Now that said, it's a little bit surprising that the proportion is so similar to last year because the tiers have shifted. So a higher tier now only goes down to a grade 4 or C, whereas it previously went down to a grade D. And similarly, foundation tier now goes all the way up to a grade 5, whereas previously it only went up to a C. So it is, given that movement of the availability of grades on the tiers, a little bit surprising that we didn't see a shift in entry there. If you do want to understand more about tiering and how that works, then there's a video you can click through to with more information. Now let's have a look at the new GCSE Combined Science Double Award, which has a 17-point grading scale that runs from 9-9 down to 1-1. Now, it is really hard to compare exactly to last year due to that change in the structure of the qualifications and now having a linear combined double award as opposed to separate core and additional uh, sciences. But what we can do is compare the outcomes for 16-year-olds from combined science this year to the outcomes last year for 16-year-olds who sat either core or additional science and 15-year-olds who sat core science. Now that reflects that common entry pattern that we see where previously a lot of schools would have entered students for core science in year 10. So if we combine those, we get a reasonable basis of comparison year on year. Now on that basis, outcomes for combined science are pretty stable as we'd expect because of comparable outcomes. Now they have gone down slightly, uh, but overall um, it's a relatively consistent picture with last year as far as we're able to make that comparison. Now if we look in detail at the tiering for the new science GCSEs, we see the foundation tier that now goes up to a grade five or five five in combined science, and the higher tier that now goes down to a grade four or four four in combined science. Now below that, there's then an allowed grade three or four three on combined science, which was intended to be half the width of a standard grade. And that's really just a safety net grade that's there to catch those few students who were rightly entered for the higher tier, but may have had a bad day when they sat the exam. Now in the event, what we saw this summer was actually quite large numbers of students underperformed on the higher tier, and so would have been at risk of falling off without a grade. Now because of that, Ofqual chose for this year only to widen that allowed grade 3 or 4-3 on combined science to be a full width grade as opposed to the half width grade that was planned. And also to add an additional allowed grade 3-3 three, three on combined science below that. Now what that's meant is that the vast majority of students have received a grade and have been rewarded for their performance at an appropriate level. But it's really important to understand that fundamentally, most of these students were performing at the level of foundation tier, not at higher tier. Now, we, our expectation is that Ofqual will not carry forward these exceptional measures through to next year. So if you have been in a situation where you've had a large number of students achieving grade 3 or 4-3 or 3-3 on the higher tier, then we would suggest that you look in detail at those and consider whether you've made the right entry decisions, because next year those students could be at risk of falling off the higher tier and not securing a grade. For more information on the structure of the new tiers, how we ensure standards across the tiers, and for more guidance on how to choose which tier to enter for, you can click through and watch this video now.